guys, in this video, I want to show you a really cool little Roomba theme by Juan Martin, but show you how we can move it to other places around the neck so that you can not only develop your own variations, which you can use for your own music and actually make a new song, but also work on getting to know the fretboard. All right, I've said it before, I'll say it again. Some people don't like him, but Juan Martin has some really cool stuff. This is from his Solos Flamencos Volume 1, his green book. Cool Roomba in there in kind of the key of E Phrygian. There's an E chord and then an F, starts on an F. Got a cool little groove to it, just a basic Roomba. But he's got this little, um, what we could call a falsetta in there, although in Roombas I don't tend to think of that word, but it's just a little riff, let's call it, on this D minor chord, and it's a really cool uh, little and fun to play little thing here. So what I wanna do here is show you exactly how to play this, talk about really what it is harmonically and why it is what it is, and how we can develop it, and how we can start thinking about doing this with other songs that you might be working on. First thing that strikes me with this phrase is we really hear that 3-3-2 three, three, idea, which is one way to um, kind of think of a Roomba, where we go 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2. So if we go to Romanza real quick, a must-know song, Romanza. That's three groups of three. One, two, three. Cut the last note out, but don't account for that uh, note that you cut out. Just immediately start again, and we get three, three, two. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. So that gives us an instant rumbo when we do that. When he plays this, you could say it's hidden in there and they absolutely overlap, but we don't really hear that da -da 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 as much as we do when we play an arpeggio like this. There's that same accent pattern. So that is what's happening here. So we have a D minor chord and we're gonna pull off. Don't play the bass note yet. I'm gonna set my thumb on the uh, fourth string here, but let's just play your middle finger on the first string and we're gonna play our index finger on the next string after we pull off to the open string. So I think, and this is not readily apparent when you're uh, reading the, the music of the tab, you know, but you leave this finger, already have this finger down. And if you find that you play this note and you pull it off open and it sounds like this, you know that you are not on your fingertip enough here with your ring finger. So that's a good test on being on your fingertip. And we're uh, going to strum a D minor chord in just a moment, so I already have this down. So always be on the lookout for that when you're reading, whether it's tablature or standard notation. It's not, um, unless they name the chord, you might not realize that you should be holding, or it would really help you to be holding the full chord that's there. So we have D minor like this, and we're gonna go. Okay, but like I said, leave the thumb out now. Just so we can get this down, I'm gonna play that first string, pull it off, and then second string with my index finger. That's a group of three, so we just do it twice. One, two, three, one, two, three, and it's gonna start again, or we think it's gonna start again, but there's only two, right? It's exactly what I was talking about a second ago. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, and I would encourage you just to do that a million times until that feels really good. See, when we get to the third one, there's kind of a hiccup kind of thing there because we're, we might be expecting another group of three, but there isn't one. Yeah. Now, if we were counting this um, in four, four time, we would say one and two and three and four and, and this accent pattern that I've been mentioning here of three, three and two, a group of three, a group of three, and then a group of two, gives us an accent on the one, on the and of two and on the four. So if we wanted to count it like that, we could say one and two and three and four and. See, the idea is at the beginning of each of those groups, we give it a little more of an accent. And um, when you count that way, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, it kind of automatically, even like unconsciously, subconsciously makes you give it that extra push every time you say the number one because it's a new group. It's kind of this weird, this mysterious thing that happens. So with our, with our thumb, let's put the thumb in now, playing the D string, same exact accents, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. So we're only playing the accents. One and two and three and four, put them together. There's a little bit more to this phrase. It's gonna happen a couple times, but uh, in between, we're gonna to go to any Roomba that you want to do on an E chord. So it's gonna sound like this. So 
notice how part of the riff, and I said you can do any room with that you want, and that's kind of true, but we want to start the next measure by playing the outer strings, the sixth string and the first string, together. See how I do a thumb rest stroke right there? Um, that's not easy to do. Very much worth practicing that. But you don't have to do that. I think being able to do it is great. So we're going one and two and three and four and one. Now we can play the rumbo this way. Middle and ring finger down, up with the thumb. Now here's where a tie is. That kind of highlights that uh, accent on the end of two. And then we'll just go, I'm sitting my thumb here as a, as a timekeeper almost. Right there, and then with your index, up, down, up. So just talking about that uh, second measure, we have this. Another great thing to repeat. One, two, and, and four, and one, two, and, and four, and. Let's put them together. Now, as we repeat it, it's uh, sometimes tough for people to go from here and immediately get to that D minor chord. So on the very last stroke, just go light on those couple of strings. They're just open strings anyway, right? And that can give you just a moment to get ready. We always have to, not always, but we probably most of the time, it's a good policy to leave a little bit early so that we're on time rather than being late, right? So, so watch this. One, two, and, and four, and, and I'm off. And we heard, I heard the open G string there, which wasn't great, but that's still better than being late because even the untrained listener can tell when you are late. See, left just a little bit early. If you wait till the last millisecond, you're gonna be late. Okay, so that happens two times. The third time we do this, we just stay on D minor. So we're always gonna play um, in this little phrase here, the logic of it is the root of the chord and then the high note in that chord. So in this case, it was the D note, the D string, and this high F note. And we just do exactly what we did on the E chord, just go finishing out that rumba. One beat is missing because we, we the, the first beat of that rumba measure um, was taken by our theme, that little riff. And so we just fill in the rest of the measure starting on G. The final part of this phrase is really cool and we're gonna do a little picado here and that's when we play index and middle rest strokes. Um, you don't have to do it, but I think it sounds really great if we do, check it out. So we ended with what we already were doing before, except I played a rest stroke, it's earlier we did this. But this time I'm gonna play a hard rest stroke. I did that with my thumb and my index finger. So here, we're gonna start off not playing picado. I suppose you could do the whole thing like this. Watch my right hand. I'm going back to the beginning of the phrase. See, I'm doing rest strokes here. That's a good challenge. Um, I don't think it's necessary. I'm just doing uh, free strokes with these guys and rest strokes with my thumb for the first part of this riff. Okay. But this next part, I'm gonna start off the same way, free strokes, watch my index and my middle. And then I veer over here to rest strokes. You might bring your hand up just a little bit to get a better angle. You don't have to move that much though. So what that is, is I'm continuing to hold the D minor chord, hammer on this pinky and do it twice. So we still have the same, it's just nothing but eighth notes here. One and two and three and four and one. I love the way that ends, it's really nice. Here's the whole thing. All right, you might need a few minutes to work on that, get that comfortable, but we're gonna move this around and this is really almost a songwriting strategy and you can tell a lot of songs you know, that are reminiscent of other songs, whether we're talking about jazz or flamenco or anything. Yeah, you might go, oh, that, that phrase kind of sounds like this other song. Well, it could very well be that the composer was listening to that song that it sounds like and just changing it a little bit and then you might have a, an entirely new song and nobody would nobody would even know so um you know it's not like the person who wrote any given song invented that note 
you know so it's all just kind of recombining and doing variations on things that really gives us new ideas so this Roomba is very short and if you wanted to kind of stretch it out and get more mileage out of it this is something you should be thinking about and doing anyway so any song that you play maybe not a classical piece because you know the composer had a real reason we assume for <laughs> composing it like he or she did so um, that's kind of uh, we could embellish that too but flamenco and jazz are really kind of screaming out for you to do things like this and make it your own as, as much as you can and do variations on a theme that's literally what we're doing here variations on a theme so if we have a d minor chord here this is just a d minor triad okay d minor triad is d f and a okay they're all here to play uh, the next uh, formation of a triad we would go up here just all the same exact three notes and you know this from playing what we could say is the A minor shape of a D minor chord, except um, it's kind of built into the guitar in the sense that we have the D string open. So now we can do the exact same thing, um, more or less, back to our riff, All right? But what if we just did that here? really gets you thinking about how we play chords all over the neck not just in one place so if you only know one place to play D minor today you'll know a couple more so I'm going now now what am I going to do if I'm going to an E chord because that is the phrase right it goes D minor to E that's what this whole riff is harmonically just those two chords so if we have a D minor here where's the closest E that I could play well I suppose we could make it the C form like this but there's an even better one an E7 chord Making it a, an E7, we add a D note, which is the flat seven. Well, we know D note is part of this key because we just played a D minor chord, right? So leave your ring finger here and check this out. Now, doing exactly the same thing that we did on the first thing, just changing where I'm playing the chord. Right, the third time around, we just stay on the chord. Now, this phrase that went like this. Think about how you can do that here. Hammering it onto the next note in the key, and then going to the next note, you would think it would be G, but it's G sharp because there's an E chord happening here, and that's what we're trying to evoke. Right? So our phrase would go like this at the end. And you can go back to a full E chord there, or you could go got to jump to a chord pretty quickly there. We don't have the luxury of playing the open strings like we did on the other E chord. Uh, we were playing G sharp, but I, I love that. We could do this so many ways. We could take a D minor triad like this and then go up to an E major. There are those chords and then just do the same kind of thing. crazy about that one but a great exercise here and let's find the next way to play the D minor triad on any given set of three adjacent strings or three strings um, with, there's only three triads that we could play um, because there's only three notes right so if we have this one we could say this is a second inversion the fifth is on the bottom this was a root position and then we'd have our first inversion right here third is on the bottom so let's try the same exact logic here and we have the open D string which is great and we'll just do the same exact thing, pull it off to the open string. Let's see how this sounds. It's a big jump there. So I'm not crazy about that, but it's good enough, right? <laughs> and now we have the open uh, E string that we can play E like this. A little bit tough, or I love this one, very Spanish-y. Adding an F note there on the 10th fret. Or we'll just play a power chord. And now we have this, a third way to do it. But now we might have a little bit of a problem for this phrase, which a minute ago became this. And now we're on D, we could go, but the next note down, just following the logic of that phrase, is not a note in the E chord. So we'll make an extra jump here maybe and go. So coming from here. kind of works uh, let's try it one more way though what if we did this instead of pulling it off to the open string because we're up so high and that's such a gigantic jump um, still sounds uh, kind of has a cool kind of vibe to it in in some perverse way but let's play the C note here and we'll go look what I did there so I went to um, the C note kind of following the logic of the very first one because it's going to the next note on the scale from this uh, F note 
right? So I'm going. Then to B, I'm, and I'm here, I'm thinking, well, I gotta play an E chord, right? So I can see it's gotta be the A form. That's the position I'm in. It's just, we're stuck there, right? We got E like this, which is the E form, the D form of E, the C form, the A form, or if you don't know the cage thing, it doesn't matter, it's just, uh, that's just one way we can conceive of it. But an E major chord, if you're in the seventh position, is can only look like this. So I'm seeing that, and I'm going, okay, I'm here on this B note, I can play this for the E chord, or I could add that F note like before, and just make sure they don't hit any, any other strings because they're not really fingered yet. And so now we have a new way to play this. have a Roomba that you know in the key of A minor or E Phrygian. They're kind of sisters of each other. And you can use this. I think it sounds awesome. But really my goal in this video is to get you thinking like this so that you can do this kind of thing on your own. If you want to get more nylon string guitar tutorials like this, be sure to like and subscribe. And if you like this Roomba, this is one of three Roombas I think everyone should know.